I get so bored, I just want to drink water during a fast. Just drink water for drinking water's sake. And also just to keep me full. It's just reality. It's chug water, pound water, whatever, because it's at least going to make the time go by and make me feel like I'm consuming something. But drinking a bunch of water during a fast can also have a negative effect. Okay, you don't want to just be pounding water as much as you can. One thing you have to remember is during a fast, you're already losing some water, more than you normally would. And that's just purely a result of the kidneys expelling more water during a fast because of low insulin levels. Yada, yada. I have talked about that probably just too much. Okay? But there's some interesting new research surrounding the world of being magnesium depleted during a fast, which is pretty interesting. And I'm also going to talk on specific micronutrient deficiencies that can happen during a fast that we need to compensate for. Okay? So the first thing is a study published in the International Journal of Physiology, Pathophysiology, and Pharmacology. It's actually cool stuff. It found that magnesium improved what is called PPAR activation and improved muscle insulin sensitivity. Now, what that means is magnesium essentially helps fat adaptation, okay? PPAR alpha is a protein that gets activated that conditions the cell to know how to utilize fat as a fuel source. We want that to happen. It just turns out that magnesium plays a tremendous role in this happening. Okay, the reason or the mechanism behind this is pretty simple. Okay, magnesium is involved in what's called the phosphorylation of the protein that allows PPAR to get activated. If the protein doesn't become, let's just call it activated by phosphorylation, then the protein in PPAR alpha does not actually, that receptor protein does not turn on. Which means if we're low in magnesium, we have less chance of getting fat adapted. So during a fast, one of the first minerals we lose is magnesium. It's simply because sodium and potassium are so critical to cellular function and to nerve function and to brain function, and our body will do whatever it can to stabilize sodium and potassium levels. Magnesium, although very, very important, it is a mineral that gets lost pretty quick in a normal life, let alone during a fast. And the more that you consume a bunch of water that doesn't maybe have some salt or electrolytes added into it, well, the more that you potentially deplete this because then you're encouraging the kidneys to expel even more water, right? Okay, well, let me jump over somewhere else for just a second because I don't want to just talk about fat adaptation. We can also develop micronutrient deficiencies. Now, namely vitamin B12. Now, about 15% of the population is deficient in vitamin B12 to begin with. Okay, that's not factoring in uh, like a vegan or vegetarian, which is more than likely going to have a harder time replenishing vitamin B12. But there's no research that shows people that fast frequently, but I could tell you based upon other corresponding research that when you're fasting, you're going to probably lose more B12 because it is very water soluble. Okay? Vitamin B12 is going to be very important to your stabilization of your heart rate variability, which means the basically stabilizing of your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. If you go too far with a B12 deficiency, you're going to be stuck in the sympathetic nervous system, which means you're going to be stressed out during a fast, which can impair how your body utilizes belly fat and visceral fat during a fast. Okay. So let me first jump over into some solutions, okay? And then I kind of jump into the big picture here of kind of what we're looking at, because I know you want solutions. Okay, vitamin B12. Definitely should be consuming some foods that are rich in vitamin B12. Definitely should be consuming some foods that are rich in things like iodine, so things like seaweed, if you possibly can. Okay, B12 supplementation is totally fine. Okay, what I would recommend is that you go for like a methylcobalamin versus a cyanocobalamin. Okay, cyanocobalamin is much more water soluble and it has some liver toxicity effects. Okay, methylcobalamin is just easier to absorb. So you usually want to go that route. And don't take it during your fast, it's fine. This is a long-term, more cumulative thing. Okay, I want you to just take it in during your you know, periods that you're eating, just so you can at least make sure you restore that. Okay, then when it comes down to the magnesium, okay, you want to consume, of course, nuts that have magnesium, but it's imperative that you get them sprouted whenever you can. Okay, sprouted is going to break down the phytic acid, which is going to make it so you can actually extract the magnesium from those almonds and from those nuts. Okay, otherwise they get chelated within the gut. Uh, FYI, if you want to check out Thrive Market down below in the description, they're an online membership-based grocery store. I have specific keto and fasting bundles through this online grocery store where I've just kind of aggregated foods that I think are good during like the feeding period of a fast, uh, but also for keto, but also just anything that you want to sort by. They're super convenient because you can sort by different diet type and then everything just gets delivered to your doorstep. Super economical, super easy. It makes sense with the content that I do and they're a big supporter of this channel. So a huge thank you to them and I appreciate you checking them out and support this channel as well. I put a link down below. Also can save 25% and get a free gift. 
when you use that link down below for Thrive Market membership grocery store down below. I wanna to touch on what happens over time if you are deficient in, say, magnesium or more importantly, like deficient in vitamin B12 can affect your heart rate variability. Okay, so heart rate variability, I've talked about in other, other videos, it's just a measurement of how stressed out you are really and how your body's recovering. So if you have lower heart rate variability, it means that your heart has less variability between beats and you're more stressed out. I'm not suggesting that you go out and measure this exquisitely, but I'm just giving you it as context. There was a study that was published in the journal Autonomic Neuroscience that demonstrated that a B12 deficiency tremendously affects your heart rate variability, meaning it affects how hard your heart has to work and how hard your nervous system has to work to accommodate that because it's not delivering as much oxygen, so you're stressed out. It's almost like if you were stressed out because of something happening and you started taking short choppy breaths and you weren't getting oxygen, well, remember, vitamin B12 helps support red blood cells which carry oxygen. So if we're deficient in B12, we're not exactly helping our red blood cells and we're not exactly getting the oxygen that we need, so then we go into that sympathetic nervous system state where we're stressed out. Well, combining a stressed out sympathetic nervous system state along with an already stressful fast can drive a lot of cortisol to what are called glucocorticoid receptors that are in our visceral fat. Now, this may sound like a reach to be able to go with this, but it actually makes a lot of sense anecdotally and based upon lots of different research. Okay, if you have high levels, too high of levels of cortisol during a fast, you don't get to tap into that visceral fat as much because the cortisol is binding to those glucocorticoid receptors and triggering what's called adipogenesis, where the visceral fat is basically accumulating fat, or in this case, at least not letting go of it. So you start getting, well, dare I say it, skinny fat, right? Pot belly, but you're burning the other fat elsewhere. So it's very important. And then when you come back, circle back to the magnesium piece, you can take magnesium during a fast, okay? You can get a benefit from that, and it does not break a fast. So I am okay with you taking some form of like dimagnesium malate or even magnesium glycinate during a fast. Totally fine, it's not gonna break it, but I do think that the bigger deal is making sure your blood levels are stable after a fast. What I don't want you to do is do like a 24-hour fast on Monday, and then not properly replenish and do another 24 hour fast on Wednesday or Thursday. Like it's when you do these longer fasts is when you potentially become depleted in this stuff, especially with the micronutrients. Now, another thing that you can do, adding some salt to your water is going to improve how much magnesium you retain, simply because magnesium is going to get expelled faster, but if you have some sodium, it's going to trigger some water retention, which you may not want, but at least it's gonna preserve some of the minerals and stop some of the you know, kidney expelling of the water. So magnesium being so critical of fat adaptation, if you were deficient in magnesium consistently, you just wouldn't be able to activate the fat adaptation system and it would take you significantly longer to get what you want out of your fast. And that's really the big picture here. So how do you look at this holistically? Because I don't want you to think about just having to add supplementation all the time. I think it should just be part of your routine to get magnesium rich foods and add magnesium supplementation. There's Magnesium is one of the supplements that I would recommend people always have simply because it's just, we're deficient in it. Like we don't get it from the soil anymore. Anyhow, so magnesium and vitamin B12, very, very critical when it comes down to your heart rate variability and fat adaptation. I will see you tomorrow.